Hi everyone, it's Mrs. B and I'm here with another uh, journal writing video for today. One of the things I thought would be really interesting to talk about are the types of journals that you're keeping. I know for a fact that many of you are keeping digital journals. You're doing these on iPads or Chromebooks or laptops, any number of electronic devices. And I know that some of you are choosing to keep handwritten journals, either on loose pieces of paper that you're gathering together or in a special notebook. Either of these are completely okay choices for your journal, because remember, the most important thing to know is the purpose of the journal. And whether the journal is digital or whether it's handwritten, the purpose is that you're creating a written document so that many years from now, you or historians, anyone in the future who wants to look back and see what it was like to be a kid during these school shutdowns, they could look back at your journal if you chose to share it and find out exactly what that was like. But there are some differences between digital journals and handwritten journals, and I want to talk just a little bit about that. So the first thing to know is that a digital journal, many people think a digital journal is a little bit faster, especially if you've been doing some keyboarding. Many people feel that they can type faster than they can write. Okay, that's one school of thought. Some people like digital journals because they can also insert links to things. If there's a recipe that they've tried, they can link that in, or a story in the news that's been interesting, they can link that in as well. Um, similar to links are attachments. It's oftentimes much easier to um, attach a photograph or a video clip into a digital journal. Last week I saw a fourth grader whose sister had learned how to ride a bike and he linked a quick video into his digital journal about that and it was something really exciting to see. Now the thing about handwritten journals, there are some really cool things about them as well. One of the really cool things is that you don't need power, no power needed for a handwritten journal. You can just tuck it under your arm, find a spot inside or outside, you don't have to worry about anything being charged, and you can begin to record your thoughts. In a handwritten journal, it's really easy to do words and doodles. And many historians, when they talk about um, journals that have been really helpful for them to learn from, they say that it's sometimes the handwriting of the person that also lets them know something about that time period. And I think that's very interesting as well. So sometimes people will say that a handwritten journal can be more unique because all of our handwriting is unique to us. And that gives you a little bit more of a sense of the person who was writing it. So those are things that are interesting to keep in mind. So what I thought would be um, fun to do today is that we would talk about handwritten journals. And if you're keeping a handwritten journal, I want to teach you today and the next time you see me how to do some fun little doodles that you could include in your handwritten journal. If you're like, no thanks Mrs. B, I really love my digital journal, then I'm going to challenge you to try on some of these doodling techniques to take a photo of them and upload them into your digital journal. Okay, let's give it a try. So today what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you how to um, do one of my most favorite types of doodle. And that doodle is called a, a bunting, all right? And a bunting is a way that you can kind of showcase words to make them pop out a little bit more. I'm gonna talk you through the steps of how to make a bunting. I'm going to do it, two twi um, do it twice, and I'm going to encourage you to watch the first time to get the steps down. Um, and you could watch again the second time to get the steps a little bit more clear, or you could pause the video and you could go and get um, a pencil or a pen or a marker, whatever you'd like, and a piece of paper and draw along with me. At the end, I'll also post an anchor chart so that you'll have something to look at and study from and reference as you practice making buntings um, after this video is over. Okay, you ready to go? All right, so the first step to making a bunting is to make two parallel lines like this. One, two. And you'll see they have just a slight curve to them, okay? The next step is I'm going to close the ends of my lines. One, two. So now I have this rectangle type of shape. Now what I'm gonna do is go to the corner of each and draw a diagonal line coming in. Notice that whatever I do on one side, I'm doing on the other, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come off 
that um, end, and I always think this is like the Z shape right here, I'm going to draw that out. And then I'm going to mirror it on this side by drawing it out. One, two. Now I'm going to go to the middle of my rectangle shape, and I'm going to draw a line that's parallel with this line coming out. One, two. All right, so far so good, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close this shape off. One, two. All right, the final step to getting the base of my bunting down is to draw a line from, you know, right about, you know, a quarter of this rectangle shape down to this point. One, two, okay? If I want to, I can add little lines that look like shading. You see? Just little lines to make it look like shading. All right, and that right there is a bunting. Some people could also call it um, a banner. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I'm gonna draw another one. You can watch or you can pause the video and you can go and get a piece of paper and try this right alongside me. I'm going to do the ends just a little bit different this time. So you can see that there's more than one way to make this single row bunting though. You ready to go? I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time. Parallel lines. One, two. Close the ends. One, two. Draw my lines in to make my Z shape. One, two. Parallel lines again coming out of the middle of the rectangle. One, two. One on the other side, one, two. This time I'm not going to draw a straight line down. I'm going to make like a V on its side, like a greater than symbol. One, and on this side I would do the less than symbol. Two, okay, and finally I'm gonna close, right there, I just did it, you couldn't see it. Close that up, and then if I want to, I can draw in the little lines to shade. And there is a different kind of bunting. All right, and this time on the right. Ta-da! Okay, so these can be a fun thing to include in a handwritten journal. You could put the date, something you're really excited about, but they're a way to make something really stand out. Give it a try. You could even go back and write a how-to and write out the steps of how to write a bunting in your journal if this is some new learning for you today. Okay, so I'm gonna just leave you with this. I hope you'll have some fun drawing these buntings and I'll be back with another journal doodling tip for you tomorrow. Have fun. Off you go.